have a very special guest on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast today. It is Razorback head football coach Sam Pittman, and he joins us now. This is the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. <laughs> Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 TheBuzz.com. We know spring practice is going on right now, and it's about to come to the end for the Arkansas Razorback football team. And we have a very special guest to talk a lot more about that. And probably a lot more other things as well. And that is head football coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks, Sam Pittman. Coach, appreciate you joining us this afternoon. How you doing? John, my pleasure. Good to see you, man. Appreciate you asking me. Absolutely. It's good to see you. And, and I want to start with this, Coach, because on my time hop the other day, I saw uh, some pictures of you uh, when you were first hired and, and when you were first coach. And seeing you now, you look completely different. And it's like for someone like me, I grew up, I, I struggled with weight. I was always, you know, that that big kid that was really slow and everything. So I've struggled with my weight. But you've lost a lot of weight. And I know it's an inspiration and everything. Just you look great. So how have you been able to, to do that over the past few years? Oh, thank you. Um, well, you know, it really started um, whenever I went for my physical last year. Uh, I'd get a, a yearly physical um, before the season. And and uh, just, you know, blood pressure up, sugar up, you know. And uh, so I thought, you know, it's kind of ridiculous. And if it was easy to lose weight, there wouldn't be any heavy people in the world. And and uh, maybe, I don't know, I don't want to say that. I don't want people to get all mad at me. But I like who I am and all that, you know. <laughs> but um, so uh, I, we have a nutritionist here, uh, Julia and I just asked her to make my meals for me during camp. And I said, if you'll do it, I'll, I promise you that's what I'll eat. And I did. And I started losing. And I, I found out it's not the total of 40 pounds or whatever, 45, whatever the number is. It's the journey that was fun. Cause I remember um, when we took our team picture, I had lost 20 pounds and I, you know, I felt really good. I, you know, and then I, you know, since I lost another 20, 25, whatever it is. But um, I just started, I walk every day two miles and then uh, I just started eating a little bit better. And and I, I attribute that to our nutritionist. She's really helped me. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, it's it's not easy. I know. And I'm sure for no, a coach like not. you, yeah, with the, all the stuff you have to do, too. But uh, you might be in the running for the best looking coach in the SEC. I don't know if there's <laughs> more for that, but uh, you're going to be up there for sure. But, Coach, I know that also this spring practice, you're going through it right now. Uh, you didn't have a spring practice your first year because of COVID. The next year, you're coming off the COVID season, coming off a three and seven year. You got a new starting quarterback, a lot of different personnel there. But this spring, you're coming off of a pretty successful season from last year. A lot of Razorback fans are excited. People are really buying into the program right now. Just what's been the overall vibe from you, your staff, your team, this spring practice compared to maybe where you were a year ago? Well, John, I think, um, which is a big deal to myself and, and our team, but I think any time that you have uh, the people that talk to the most kids and you can keep them, in other words, your your two coordinate your three coordinators, uh, which they they talk to the most kids. They and uh, so we our very first day of spring ball this year was like we had been together for a long time. It was really it was really cool. It was really neat uh, because we kept Coach Browse, Coach Odom, obviously Coach Fountain. But the other thing about it is we kept Jamil Walker, our strength coach. And then, of course, the next guy that talks to most people is your offensive line coach, you know, and he had opportunities uh, or an opportunity to leave, and he decided to stay here with us as well. And and so uh, I think that a big thing about spring ball is keeping the, the, the culture, the current coaches. I think that was huge. And in all honesty, it may not look like we have a ton of starters coming back, John, but we really have a lot of guys that's played a lot of ball coming back for us. 
Well, I wanted to start there too with the uh, with the assistant coaches and your coordinator staying because if you look at the landscape in college football, you know I see other major programs, even in the SEC, coordinators are taking other coordinator jobs. You know, it's not even like they're getting that head coaching position; they're just mm-hmm. going kind of in lateral moves, as some people would consider. But you have been able to keep uh, Kendall Browles, Barry Odom, you mentioned Scott Fountain, your string coach, all of those guys, which I know is huge. But I thought it was interesting when we got a chance to meet with Coach Browles and Coach Odom. They were both asked about staying in Arkansas, and the first thing they said was, Coach Sam Pittman, the culture yeah. that you're building and everything. When you hear them say that, though, and you hear the, the you know, obviously having the culture that you've built and obviously having assistant coaches buy into it, I mean, how does that make you feel when that's the first thing that they say is because you, that's why they stayed here? Well, it hits you right in the heart. I mean, it's, it's, um, uh, it's, um, uh, it's awesome, you know, um, and it's so kind for, I called both of them and thanked them for saying that, you know, but, um, I, I felt like they meant it as well, you know, and so, uh, you know, you treat a man like a man and, and, um, with respect. And I've always said the title doesn't make the man, the man makes the man. And i hopefully I'm the same guy I was when I was at, you know, Beggs high school that, I that maybe a little bit more knowledge and things of that nature, but I don't believe that because I'm the head coach at Arkansas, it should change who I am. And hopefully it hadn't. And, and obviously these guys coming back, um, it tells a little bit of, of that, uh, we're doing some things right here as far as men go. And if you're doing it right with your coaching staff, you're surely doing it right with your players as well. So very hard. I felt it in my heart. I was very honored that they said that. And you mentioned players and the returning starters that you have. You also added some guys, of course, with the high school class and then the transfer portal. You really added a lot of people there, too, as well. And I've been just been curious about this because you've been around coaching for a long time. You recruited really well when you were an offensive line coach at Arkansas and at Georgia and all those things, too. It was mainly at a high school. But now that the transfer portals happen. Is the recruiting of those guys similar to what it is recruiting guys in high school? Is it you giving them the same pitches? What's the kind of the correlation there as far as approaching guys in the portal to come to your school and approaching guys who are in high school to come to your school? Well, high school, you're recruiting a class. So in high school, you're recruiting whatever your board numbers say. But let's say you're recruiting five offensive linemen, two backs, a quarterback, you know, boom, boom, boom. And so – you're recruiting a team uh, out of high school. Uh, in the portal, you're recruiting a need. And that need could be um, recruiting uh, in the past hasn't been good there. It could mean the guy you've lost kids in the portal from that position. It could be injuries. It could be. So once you go in the portal, it's for a need. And it makes it a little bit in my opinion, easier because you're selling, you're not going in the portal necessarily for depth. If that's the worst thing that happens in the portal that you get a kid that he supplies depth for your team and he's a good second team guy, that's that's not bad either. Um, so there's we would not go in the portal unless it is a major need that we think that we need a player at that position. So it's a little bit different. You're recruiting a team out of high school and you're recruiting individuals at a particular position uh, out of the portal. Coach Sam Pittman of the Razorback football team is our guest right now on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Coach KJ Jefferson is a guy that just played so great last year. And going into last season, and this is something I talked about on my show and my podcast, I saw all these lists of people having, well, he's 14th in the SEC as far as starting quarterbacks go. And I understand that he wasn't a starter, but we saw in that Missouri game in your first year just what he was capable yeah. of. And then last season, he puts it all together, has a phenomenal year. Now suddenly people are buying into KJ, putting him at the top of their list of SEC quarterbacks. Just what's it been like for you to see him grow and to be able to kind of shut up the naysayers and thinking that he wouldn't be one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC? Well, I wish I knew that the whole time. You know, I didn't. You know, he hadn't played a whole lot of ball before that Missouri game. And I can remember Coach Browse and I on the phone headed to the Missouri game talking to a quarterback in the portal. And uh, and I can remember having Coach Browse call the same kid we talked to going to Missouri after the game coming back and 
I told Ken, I said, we can't take him. We've got our quarterback of the future. We can't take him. We need to be loyal to who's loyal to us. And and so uh, I can remember that. And then I can remember KJ getting in front of the team because, you know, you always want to know what makes somebody click. And he and he talked about being ranked 14th in the SEC. And, uh, you know, I could relate to that because when I got the job, I was – uh, the last power ranked the last power five coach, obviously 14th in the SEC and all those things too. Now that didn't drive me quite as much as what I understand the 14th pick of KJ. You know, I think that really was a driving force to him. So he's going to have to find something else this year because he won't be ranked 14th going into this season. He'll have to find something else that makes him click. And another guy that I know a lot of Razorback fans are excited to have back is Jalen Catalan because he yeah. missed the majority of last year and they know how pivotal he was to that defense in 2020. Uh, how do you feel like his progression has gone coming off of that injury and how's he looked so far in spring practice? I think he's back. I think he's better than what he ever has been. A lot of confidence. You know, if you really look at Cat, he played more than four games, but when he broke his hand at the, at the first half of A&M, which was game four, um, I'm not going to say he was done for the year, but he, he was. I mean, he had the shoulder, then the hand. Uh, he just wasn't the same guy. Now, he toughed it out and tried it and those things. Uh, and then we, he, he, we, we were smart. You know, we ended up getting him the surgery. But he's back full goal, better than ever. <coughs> I know, Coach. Yeah, no, Coach. It's uh, another thing, too, that I thought was kind of cool is just uh, seeing, you know, obviously in your, going into your third season, uh, not, not being a head coach at this level before, people kept bringing it up to you. Is there anything that – and I, I'm trying to make sure I say this right. Is there anything that maybe as a head coach after going in or going into your third season that you is different from what you expected or maybe something that's been uh, a little bit crazier than maybe what you anticipated? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I make so many mistakes, you know, all the time. I hopefully, when I make them, I'm, I'm, I'm learning from that and don't do it again. And, you know, uh, I'll be honest with you, I think a veteran coach makes mistakes. You know, I, you know, uh, you're not – we always try to take the I hope out of a game situation to I know because we've gone over it, we've practiced it, we're ready to go, we want to walk in there with a lot of confidence. But – the, the number one thing is how many employees we have in the building and how many of, you know, how much conversation I have each and every day. You know, I thought I'd, you know, myself and the coaching staff would, you know, meet and this. I mean, we have 56, 57 employees in here and all of them have at, at times needs, concerns, this, that, and that. So there's so much more meeting time with folks outside the immediate 10 position coaches than I ever thought it would be. I knew it was going to be heavy and hot in recruiting. You know, of course, they added the portal to us since then. COVID was certainly a, a challenging deal and uh, just a lot of challenges to it. But if we solve the problem as fast as we can, then we'll move on to the next one. And I'm pretty level, low key, pretty, you know, I want to handle situations, show people respect. But I think that's been the biggest thing, just the amount of people and the amount of constant rotation of my office door. Well, and I think another thing you can add into it, I think we even talked about it last uh, time we spoke to each other was about, you know, with the NIL, you've kind of just been hands off of and saying, hey, you know, that's that's with the player and, and everything there, too. You, is it kind of the same thing for you now? You're just, you know, that's not something you focus on. You just let the players and everybody involved with that do their thing and you just focus on being the coach pretty much? Well, John, I, I don't want to lose a player um, through NIL, but I also don't want to lose my team. And so uh, I think if you start promising kids this, this, this coming out of high school, uh, they're going to tell somebody on the team, you're going to have separation on the team. I would rather somebody come and buy a player from us uh, and we lose one than lose the team. And uh, so uh, we are getting better and better here at NIL understanding. We're trying to bring it all into the university and try to stay away from as many outside collectives as we can uh, so the money 
if 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 someone's earned the right to be represented then the money is there you know for some of these cl collectives that are going on out there it's a promise but the, the money's not there for the kids and so uh, we still don't talk about it in recruiting uh, again i think it'll separate the football team but it's readily available and kids can earn that right and they should have that right and i'm all for it but i believe that you have to earn it well, coach i know spring practice is also about to come to an end so i'm curious what's on the agenda for sam Pittman once it all comes to an end is there any vacations any trips going to lake hamilton every weekend i mean what's what's the plan here well you know I've been on a road in spring recruiting my whole, you know, ever since I got into college football forever. And I always want to know what it was like to be that head coach. Well, my first year was COVID. Last year, they canceled spring. So we had, you know, all the coaches were in. And so I really haven't had the benefit yet until this year. Now, I did look at my calendar, John. It's got a whole bunch of stuff on it, you know, as mm -hmm. far as, going around the state of Arkansas and, and different meetings and all this kind of stuff. But I do notice I have kind of kept that Friday, Saturday, Sunday open. And, and absolutely, I love hot springs and I love to go down there. And so on the weekend, hopefully I can get a chance to go out there and get on a boat and relax a little bit. Yeah. Well, because me and my group, we go to Hot Springs every weekend too. And on Lake Hamilton as well. And we got a boat. And it's just, I don't, I'm, because I'm with you. There's something just enjoyable about Because I've been on other lakes it. too. Yeah. It's like I've been on other lakes in the state. There's something about Hamilton. It, it's just, it's just almost like got so much to do. And the, the people are really kind. It's just a fun time down there every single time. I too. think it is. You know, in the summer, you can get live music down there, at, yeah. you know, Future Trail Marina and, and be on your boat. And then, you know, you can go to Sam's Pizza. And I mean, you, there's eight or nine places you can get off your boat, Fisherman's Wharf, you can, and and eat and and uh, Bubba's and all that. And so, you know, I love that. You know, I love love doing that. And and a little bit, you, it's a little bit of uh, I can kind of get away a little bit, you know. And yeah. once I'm on my boat, I can I can kind of do go wherever I want. And I got my own little secret places if I want to go somewhere. And and uh, Jamie and I can just really enjoy it. And I enjoy seeing the people as well. But you know, if I didn't, I wouldn't have built that big hog out there, you know, because it's like boats on parade right now going through there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And, and you know, like, first off, what kind of boat do you have out of curiosity? I've got a, a, bow, a bow rider. Uh, or it's a bow rider. I don't be able to, I, I don't know how you say the name, but it's, yeah. it's a tritune that sets down. Uh, okay. like a boat in the front and uh it's a bennington i, I, lo I love oh, it yeah. yeah yeah we got a chaparral i think is how you say it. it's about yeah. 20 years old and it runs most of the time you know so <laughs> if it runs and stays afloat you got it it's all you need coach it's all you need yeah and that razor bags you put out there that's such a cool thing i know that got a lot of interaction on social yeah. media when you put it out there but between that and I remember the picture of you on your vacation where there were the pigs there in the water next to you as well. Yeah. I have never seen a coach embrace the pig mascot more so than you. And it's just, it's awesome. Cause I know Razorback fans love it, but why the pig? Cause most people kind of say, eh, pigs are dirty. Don't want to have anything to do with the pig, but you've embraced the pig. You know, the hog strong, you know, and it has been in my life ever since I came over. I've, we had a recruit in the other day and I was talking to him about, I love the school colors and I love the pig and I, I've always loved the hog. I don't, I don't know why, I guess probably cause it's the only one out there and those things I get when I was a kid, we had, we had hogs when I was a kid. So I, I don't, I don't really know, but, but, uh, um, Sally was one of the hogs name and Sally left, but I was eating bacon. I don't know what happened, but, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, uh, I, I don't. I, I, I've always had an infatuation with the freaking hog, and uh, and the University of Arkansas. So to get that statue out there, Brian White did such a great job on that thing. Uh, put lights on it and all that. And, you know, Jamie was going. Well, everybody's going to know where you live. I said they know where we live anyway, Jamie. I mean, so you might as well give them something to come over and call the hogs too because they they come by and call the hogs and to you know do their horn and and uh 
it's it's a lot of fun. You know, the slobbers coming out of the mouth. I like that. It's I'm, Brian White did, or Brandon, excuse me, Brandon White did such a great job with that. Yeah, it's definitely awesome. I know we're going to check it out when we go down there for sure too, Coach. Well, uh, before I let you go, though, I, I just have this question because I like to ask this to, to a lot of different coaches too, and especially with you since obviously we talked about how much you've embraced Arkansas and you love Arkansas. But when you just hear the name Arkansas, just the the term Arkansas, what's what comes to your mind? Like what is the thing that you think of the most when you hear Arkansas? Loyalty, people, beautiful um uh hard work it's what comes to me uh, when you say arkansas yeah well i think it's uh mirroring what you want of your football program as well so yeah. i guess it works out i guess it works out yeah. so but uh but coach listen we appreciate you coming on with us thanks so much for making time for us enjoy the rest of spring enjoy the spring game this saturday and hopefully we'll catch up with you later down the road enjoy lake hamilton too when you go down all right john i'll see you down there sometime appreciate Absolutely. your time Appreciate right. it, Coach. Thanks. Bye now. Good deal. That's it, Coach. Appreciate it so much. Okay, buddy. Have a great day. All right. You as well. Thank you.